Jaden versus Asta in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series is an interesting duel, as Asta, like Jaden, is also an Elemental Hero user. However, Asta shakes Jaden's resolve when he reveals that the reason he uses Elemental Heroes is because his father was murdered during a break-in, and the reason he uses the heroes are because they are a reminder that one day, justice might prevail over the evil in the world. <laughs> Whereas for Jaden, well, he uses them because he thinks they're cool. To him, this disrespects the meaning that these cards hold to him. However, before the end of this duel, he will abandon his elemental heroes and embrace the destiny heroes. This is because Asta no longer believes in justice, as the criminal who killed his dad was never caught. He realizes to achieve your destiny, things have to be taken into your own hands. And so, this is why the Vigilante Heroes, known as the Destiny Heroes, become his new main deck. Today I want to analyze if Jaden really had no way of winning this duel, and if the pro duelist, Aster Phoenix, was really too much for him to handle. And also, while we're looking at it, did anybody make any misplays throughout this duel? Spoilers, yes. Yes, they did. <laughs> Let's find all this out together as we jump into the duel. The duel begins and Asta goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of elemental hero Avion, Bastinatrix, Clayman, Sparkman, D-Time, and Destiny Signal. Asta summons Clayman into defense, then ends his turn. Why didn't he set either of his traps face down, which, keep in mind, would have either let him special summon a Destiny Hero monster from his deck if his monster is destroyed, or potentially add at least one Destiny Hero from his deck to his hand? Well, the reason that he did this is quite simple for plot. By not setting them now, it will make for a more dramatic reveal later, when the Destiny Heroes finally get revealed. Basically, he did this because of the plot. If you want to put another reason to it, maybe Asta's just so confident that he can win this duel, he can hold back a little bit every now and then. Regardless, I'm going to count this as a misplay for Asta. It's Jaden's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Bastinatrix, Necroshade, Polymerization, The Warrior Returning Alive, and Light Laser. Jaden begins by activating Polymerization, fusing his Avion and Bastinatrix together to make Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Jaden enters his battle phase and attacks Clayman, which is destroyed. Due to Flame Wingman's effect, Aster is dealt damage equal to Clayman's attack. Jaden ends his turn. It's back to Aster and he draws Polymerization. The dub makes an error here, showing Aster with an almost completely different hand. These dub animation errors are going to happen a lot in this duel, so buckle up. Asta plays Polymerization, and like Jaden, he also fuses his Avion and Bastinatrix together. However, instead he creates the elemental hero Phoenix Enforcer, whose effect makes it unable to be destroyed by battle. Asta uses Phoenix Enforcer to crash into Flame Wingman. However, only Flame Wingman is destroyed. Asta ends his turn. I should to quickly touch on something that isn't too important, but it's definitely something worth mentioning. Asta plays an elemental hero deck, right? So he has all of the elemental hero main deck monsters. We don't see him use all of them, like Blade Edge and things like that. At the very least, he plays the core five. But what I'm more curious about is his extra deck. Is he playing an identical extra deck to Jaden, with perhaps the only exception being he's playing a Phoenix Enforcer instead of a Flame Wingman? Or does he have completely alternate versions of all of the Elemental Heroes? Because he does say in this duel that his Phoenix Enforcer sort of mirrors him, like how Flame Wingman mirrors Jaden. That's why they differ. Unfortunately, there's no answer to this because Asta never uses any other Elemental Hero fusion monsters, so I can't answer that in today's video. But I'll let you guys be the judge. I did do a poll on this asking you lot what you thought about this, but I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. Does Asta have an identical extra deck to Jaden? Let me know. Anyway, putting that aside, it's back to Jaden and he draws Elemental Hero Bubble Man. He summons it to the field and then, due to its anime effect, since it's the only card that he has, he's allowed to draw two new cards. He gets Elemental Hero Sparkman and another Polymerization. He plays the Warrior Returning Alive in order to add Avion back to his hand. Then he activates Polymerization to fuse Bubble Man, Sparkman and Avion together to make Elemental Hero Tempest. Tempest attacks Phoenix Enforcer, but due to the latter's effect, it is not destroyed. Regardless though, Asta still takes the damage. Jaden ends his turn. Let's stop right there. Could Jaden have made a superior Elemental Hero fusion monster here? Because he had a lot of options to go for. To know the answer to that, we need to know what his extra deck looks like. And guess what? I've made it. 
This is what Jaden's extra deck looks like at this point in the anime. So if we go back to when Jaden activates the warrior returning alive, let's wait a second and consider our options. Jaden has Sparkman, Bubbleman, Necroshade, and then he can either add Bastinatrix or Avion for materials. Knowing this, this means his fusion options are Elemental Hero Marina, which wouldn't have helped. Elemental Hero Dark Bright, which again, wouldn't have helped here. Elemental Hero Steam Healer, well, that definitely wouldn't have helped. Or the final choice, Elemental Hero Tempest, which despite not having a very good effect at all, it is the only monster he could make that had superior attack to Phoenix Enforcer. So in actuality, Jaden did make the right choice here. It's Aster's turn and he draws his second polymerization. He activates it and fuses his Sparkman and Phoenix Enforcer together to make Elemental Hero Shining Phoenix Enforcer. Now, due to its effect, it gains 300 attack for each Elemental Hero in Aster's grave. Since there are five, its attack increases to 4,000. Oh and look, another dub error. Is that VWXYZ Dragon Catapult? cannon? That should be Phoenix Enforcer. How embarrassing. Anyway, Shining Phoenix Enforcer then attacks and destroys Tempest. Aster sets D-Time face down and ends his turn. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Pot of Greed. He plays it and draws two new cards which are Miracle Fusion and Skyscraper. Jaden plays Miracle Fusion, banishing from his grave Flame Wingman and Sparkman to summon Shining Flare Wingman. It too gains 300 attack for every elemental hero in the grave. However, with only four monsters, Shining Flare Wingman's attack increases to only 3,700. But Jaden has a plan. First he plays his equip spell Light Laser and attaches it to Shining Flare Wingman. Its effect makes it so it can only be equipped to a light monster, but now any monster that that monster battles with is banished at the end of the damage step. Jaden then activates his field spell Skyscraper and attacks Phoenix Enforcer. Skyscraper boosts Shining Flare Wingman's attack by 1000, the damage is dealt and then due to Light Laser's effect, Shining Phoenix Enforcer is banished. And it is here where Aster switches his strategy. He reveals that since a hero monster was removed move from his side of the field, he can activate his trap D-Time, which lets him add as many Destiny Hero monsters from his deck whose total levels are equal to or less than Phoenix Enforcers. Since Phoenix Enforcer was a level 8, he adds the level 4 Diamond Dude and the level 3 Doom Lord. Jaden ends his turn. It's Aster's turn and he draws the field spell Clock Tower Prison. He activates it, which destroys Jaden's field spell Skyscraper. Now, every time Jaden's standby phase occurs, Clock Tower Prison will receive one clock counter. Then, when there are four or more counters, Aster will no longer receive any battle damage. Also, if Clock Tower Prison is destroyed whilst it has four or more clock counters on it, then he can special summon one Destiny Hero monster from his hand, deck, or grave. Aster summons Destiny Hero Doom Lord, and then uses its effect to banish Shining Flare Wingman into the future. It will return to the field two turns later, during Aster's second standby phase. However, by doing this, Doom Lord is unable to attack this turn. Aster sets Destiny Signal face down, and ends his turn. It's back to Jaden and he draws Rottweiler. The standby phase occurs and Clock Tower Prison gains its first clock counter. Jaden normal summons Rottweiler and then attacks and destroys Doom Lord. Since a monster was destroyed though, Aster activates his face down Destiny Signal to special summon Captain Tenacious from his deck straight to the field. I do like the line that Jaden gives here. It's my Destiny Signal. That's real original. I heard that. Anyway, Jaden ends his turn. It's Aster's turn and he draws and he gets D-Shield. The standby phase occurs and Captain Tenacious' effect kicks in, which lets it summon one monster that was destroyed during the previous turn's battle phase. Doom Lord returns back from the grave. Following this, Aster Normal summons Diamond Dude and then uses its effect. He reveals the top card of his deck and then, if it's a normal spell, he can activate it during his next main phase. The card sent is Misfortune. Aster enters his battle phase and attacks Rottweiler with Diamond Dude. It's destroyed and Jaden receives damage. However, due to the effect of Rottweiler, Jaden can add Polymerization and one Elemental Hero Monster from his grave to his hand. Captain Tenacious, with no monsters left on the field, then attacks directly. Jaden life points are reduced down to a mere 1400. Aster ends by setting D-Shield face down. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed something here. Aster still has one more attack. Doom Lord. He hasn't used its ability this turn, so it's more than capable of attacking. Well, had Aster attacked with Doom Lord, that meant that Jaden would only have 800 life points left. And that'll become very important a little bit later. But that doesn't really matter, because there's an even superior play that Aster could have done here. What he should have done was use Doom Lord's ability 
to banish Rottweiler instead. Why? Well, because it allows Captain Tenacious and Diamond Dude to attack directly, which would leave Jaden with 600 life points left. But more importantly, it would deny Jaden the ability to add a elemental hero from his grave and a polymerization. And with no bubble man in his hand and no polymerization, he's bricked. So unfortunately, Asta, I'm going to have to give you another misplay here. It's back to Jaden and he draws Bubble Blaster. The standby phase occurs and Clock Tower Prison gains its second clock counter. Jaden summons Bubble Man and then through its effect he draws two new cards. These are Defusion and Elemental Hero Clayman. Jaden activates Bubble Blaster equipping it to Bubble Man. This increases its attack to 1600. Jaden enters his battle phase and attacks Captain Tenacious, but Asta activates his face down D Shield, which attaches to Tenacious, switches it to defense and makes it unable to be destroyed by battle. Jaden ends his turn. Now, I've just realized this while making the video, he does have Bubble Man, Clay Man, Polymerization and Defusion all together. So if he wanted to, he could make a Mudball Man here and then he has the option to defuse if he wants to, but I don't think that's a great play. So I don't know why I brought it up, but that was an option that was available to him there. I've just, I've just realized it afterwards. I didn't write it down. So I just thought I'd quickly mention it. It's Asta's turn and he draws Terraforming. The standby phase occurs. And since two turns have passed, Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman returns to the field. Asta reminds Jaden of Diamond Dude's effect. Misfortune, the card that he had sent during the last turn, now activates. Half of the original attack points of a monster are dealt as damage to the owner. Asta targets Shining Flare Wingman. Jaden receives 1,250 damage, which leaves him with 150 life points left. Remember when I said the previous turn he could have attacked with that Doom Lord? Well, had he attacked with that Doom Lord back then, Misfortune's ability right here would have won him the duel. Regardless, due to Misfortune's second effect, Asta isn't able to declare an attack. So instead, he rebanishes Shining Flare Wingman through Doom Lord's effect and ends his turn. It's back to Jaden and he draws Burial from a different dimension. The standby phase occurs and Clock Tower Prison receives its third clock counter. Jaden enters his battle phase and attacks Doom Lord with Bubble Man. Doom Lord is destroyed and Asta receives 1000 damage, leaving him with a mere 600 life points left. Jaden summons Elemental Hero Clayman into defense and ends his turn. It's Asta's turn and he draws Ring of Magnetism. The standby phase occurs and Doom Lord is revived through Captain Tenacious' effect. Asta uses the effect of Diamond Dude again to reveal the top card of his deck. The card revealed is Magical Stone Excavation. It is sent to the grave. Asta then uses Doom Lord's effect to banish Bubble Man for two turns. Bubble Blaster is destroyed as a result. Following this, he plays his Ring of Magnetism, equipping it to Captain Tenacious, which decreases its attack and defense, but makes it so that it is the only monster that can be attacked on his side of the field. Sadly, since Clayman's defense is too high, Aster is forced to end his turn here. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Elemental Hero Wild Heart. We actually get to see his hand here and it's completely wrong in the dub. What his actual hand should look like is this. Burial from a different dimension, Defusion, Necro Shade, Wild Heart, and polymerization. The standby phase occurs and the fourth clock tower counter is added to clock tower prison. Now unbeknownst to Jaden, all battle damage to Asta is negated. Jaden plays his polymerization to fuse wild heart and necrochet together to make elemental hero necroid shaman whose effect is when it's summoned to the field Jaden can pick one monster on Asta's side of the field to send to the grave and then special summon one monster from his grave to replace it. Jaden chooses captain tenacious to go to the grave, D shield and ring of magnetism are also destroyed as a result. Then he declares Avion to be summoned to the field in a tap position. Necroid Shaman then attacks and destroys Doom Lord. However, Asta takes no battle damage thanks to his field spell. Jaden sets Burial from a different dimension and Defusion face down and ends his turn. Now, while this turn is absolutely fine, Jaden could have built a little bit more on his play. After attacking Doom Lord with Necroid Shaman, he could have also used Defusion to bring Wild Heart and Necroshade to the field. Both could then attack over Diamond Dude and Avion literally wiping out Asta's entire field. Of course, Asta won't take any damage from this, but now his field is completely empty. However, I can see why Jaden might not do this because it runs the risk of one of his monsters getting attacked and he's only got 150 life points left. And of course, Jaden knows about Diamond Dude's ability, which is gonna get Magical Stone Excavation next turn. He could assume he's gonna get Misfortune back and ultimately Defusion will save his life if he holds on to it. So I'm not gonna count it as a misplay, it's fine. Anyway it's back to Asta and he draws Fusion Sage. The standby phase occurs and Shining Flare Wingman returns to the field once again. Asta's Diamond Dude's effect also kicks in from the previous turn. 
allowing Asta to activate Magical Stone Excavation. This card allows him to add one spell from his grave, as long as he discards two cards. He discards Fusion Sage and Terraforming to add back Misfortune. He plays it again on Shining Flare Wingman. If this is successful, Asta wins the duel. However, Jaden smartly, I might add, plays Defusion and then chains Burial from a different dimension to it. The reason why this is really clever is because Jaden considered like how things resolved so that defusion would work. What I mean by this is that effects resolve in reverse order in Yu-Gi-Oh. So Burial resolves first since it was activated second, which meant that he could add Wingman and Sparkman back into his grave. And then defusion would resolve second since it was played first. However, in testing this, this play doesn't actually work. And in all honesty, I don't know why. So if you're a big brain out there, please let us know in the comment section below what is going wrong in this play. Or else, otherwise Jaden, I guess this is an illegal play. Regardless, now since the target is no longer present, Misfortune's effect fizzles. However, what doesn't fizzle is that Asta can no longer attack this turn. Asta is forced to end his turn here. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, Asta, you misplayed again. You got a little bit greedy this turn. If you would have picked any other monster apart from the fusion monster, you would have won. If you'd have picked Bubble Man, I know it's only 400 damage, but that's enough to win you the duel, and you can't defuse a Bubble Man. Now, of course, to know this, you would have to assume that Jaden does have a defusion in his deck. It's a fusion deck, he's played defusion a lot. It's safe to kind of assume that. However, if I was in Asta's shoes, I probably would have picked Shining Flare Wingman as well. Because it's the biggest monster on the field, it's going to deal the most amount of damage. There's always a chance, because Jaden has two face downs, that he's got maybe a elemental recharge. Or something along those lines that could give him life points back. So I guess you'd want to do as much damage as possible. Anyway, it's back to Jaden, and he draws Fusion Gate. He activates it, which causes Clock Tower Prison to be destroyed. However... This is what Asta wanted. Now, since Clock Tower Prison was destroyed, while it had four clock counters on it, its final effect kicks in. Asta Special summons his boss monster, Destiny Hero Dreadmaster. When summoned, Dreadmaster destroys all non-Destiny Hero monsters on his side of the field. Then, it special summons two Destiny Hero monsters from his grave. Asta summons back Doomlord and Captain Tenacious. Now, Dreadmaster's original attack points become equal to the combined attack of all other Destiny Hero monsters on his side of the field. Lastly, and most importantly, and unbeknownst to Jaden, during the turn Dreadmaster is summoned, Destiny Heroes cannot be destroyed, and the owner receives no battle damage from battles involving them. And unfortunately, it is here that Jaden makes a huge misplay. He activates the effect of Fusion Gate, banishing his Clayman and Sparkman to make Elemental Hero Thunder Giant. Due to its effect, when its fusion summoned, it can destroy one monster with less original attack than it. Jaden chooses Diamond Dude, with the hopes of reducing Dreadmaster's attack, making it weak enough to be destroyed by battle. However, this is where Asta reveals his Dreadmaster's protection abilities. Nothing is destroyed. Jaden reluctantly ends his turn here. We'll come back to this turn in just a second, but for now, the final turn. It's Asta's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws, but it doesn't even matter what it is, as Asta simply enters his battle phase, attacks, and wins the duel. So the question now becomes, could Jaden have won this duel? Let's find out. Jaden lost! His cards! Let's go back to Jaden's final turn. He activates the effect of Fusion Gate and fuses Sparkman and Clayman together to make Elemental Hero Thunder Giant. How about... Instead of that, we make Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman again, since it's back in the extra deck. This would create a stronger monster than Dreadmaster, and would also let him keep Clayman on the field in defense. So now Jaden would have Shining Flare Wingman, Clayman, and Necroid Shaman. This time when Jaden declares an attack on any of the monsters, thinking he has game, when that fails, he can simply switch Necroid Shaman to defense, since it hasn't declared an attack yet. Now, when Asta's turn happens, depending on whether he draws another monster, he will now have to banish Flare Wingman with Doomlord's effect, since it's now a threat. Dreadmaster would then attack over Necroid Shaman, since it has a high attack and would be a threat next turn. However, now Jaden's Clayman's defense is too high for the rest of the Destiny Hero monsters to get over. Asta will have to end by using Diamond Dude's ability once more, and that's it. Jaden gets to live for another turn. He gets to draw a card, and depending on what that is, he might be able to make a comeback. 
Honestly, it's anyone's game after this, but what we have done is brought Jaden another turn and a potential to possibly win the duel. Anyway, I won't speculate any further past this since there's no way of me knowing what cards they're going to draw after this, but I will end by saying Jaden summoning the Thunder Giant for the final turn was a misplay. And to summarize this duel, well, it was riddled with misplays. Honestly, Aster especially. But I will say, if Aster didn't make any mistakes, this duel would probably have been over by the sixth turn. I think Aster was the superior duelist in this duel by a very long shot. I think he dominated, and I don't think whatever Jaden would have done, even though there was one or two things he could have done better, I think Aster, no matter what, destiny was on his side and fate smiled upon him. Do you see what I did there? As for Jaden, honestly, there's not much more he could have done. I think he played the best possible duel he could with the cards that he had. And thematically, I guess it's kind of good that he loses because he needs to learn a little bit of a lesson about the elemental heroes, I guess. I don't really see any problem with him liking the elemental heroes just because they're cool. But I guess it does disrespect Aster's ideals, but he gets rid of his elemental heroes after this duel anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And Jaden's gonna get the Neo Spatians after this, so I guess those are his true deck or whatever. So yeah, it's fine. Anyway, what did you guys think of this duel? Is there anything that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye everyone.